Welcome to Sundas lecture. This is lecture number 61 and in this lecture we are going to start a new topic transient response in RLC circuit. So what is transient response? See if you are going to switch the RLC circuits inside the electrical network and what is the response that is going to happen in resistor, inductor and capacitor circuits. That is what we are going to see in depth right. So we are going to use AC source and DC source to get the transient responses. First, see the transient response. If you are going into transient response, then we need to solve differential equations, linear differential equations. And there are many methods to solve linear differential equations. See, most of the syllabus or most of the topics covered in the RLC in transient responses may use Laplace transform. But in our lectures, yes, we are going to use Laplace transform, but I am not going to teach you Laplace transform at the beginning. Try to understand. Why? Because in Laplace transforms, you cannot understand the depth concept about the transient responses because you are going to use or you are going to make the T domain to the S domain which means frequency domain. That frequency domain again converted into T domain using inverse Laplace transform. See what you are going to do in Laplace transforms if if you want to solve differential equation, then you have to deal with the differential equations, d, d, d by dt equations. Uh, in Laplace transforms, you convert the differential equations into linear uh, algebraic expressions. And then you will again convert the S domain to T domain. So the process becomes e e easy, but you, you cannot understand the depth concept about the transient in RLC circuits. So, what I am going to do? I am going to explain you RLC transients using classical way of solving differential equations. And it is not going to be CI and PI. I am telling you. You just follow my videos hereafter. I will give you a better insight towards the RLC transient responses you will understand we will do that okay for that for that first we will see the basics of resistors inductors and capacitors so that it will be very easy to understand the um, maybe my future lectures right so we will take resistors so what resistor will do you obviously know what resistors will do uh, if you give voltage across the resistor that will be a current see hereafter we will use v of t and i of t because because uh, we are going to um, get the transient responses for that we need to know what what at what time you are going to get the voltages and current so obviously i am going to give you v of t and i of t right so so if you if you give a voltage across the inductor there will be a current flows through the inductor right and what is this one see if you try to understand the basics of resistor what resistor will do resistor will heat up when you give voltage to it and if a current flows through it so obviously here there will be some there will be some power loss power loss in the form of in the form of heat right in the form of heat that is the basic idea about resistor right and how much of power would have been lost so p will be is equal to i square r maybe maybe i square of t maybe i will write it as t because from the beginning itself we will do that i square into i square into r that is what r you can write it as joules it, anything it may be so you try to understand the resistor will always dissipates the heat energy can resistor store anything inside the, inside it no it cannot store anything why because it always dissipates the power 
as a heat energy right so now if you want to draw the graph for example see i have maybe you take this as the voltage v of t with respect to time with respect to time maybe my v of t is like this like this it may be anything with respect to time it is actually changing so you see if 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 i want to find what is my i of t what is my i of t right i will draw like this this is i of t with respect to time maybe what is i of t i of t will be is equal to v of t divided by r ohms law ohms law right then then the magnitude of i of t will be reduced that depends on the resistor value maybe if it is 2 if resistor is also 2 then it will be 1 right one amperes will be 1 and voltage will be 2 so it may it may it may be like this maybe maybe i will i will take a, a points see this is the maybe it will come like this and then it will be like this it will be like this see you try to understand both voltages and the currents will be same maybe the magnitude will differ but when the voltage becomes zero at this point maybe t is equal to maybe we will take it as yes some some point t is equal to yes and you see the current will also become zero at the same point right so this explains as if you want to find what is the current at a particular time see if i want to find a current at this time at this time maybe t is equal to 7 seconds right what you need you have to see what is the voltage at t is equal to 7 seconds and you divide it by a constant resistance you will get current so which means if you want to find a instant current in a resistor you need only instant voltage so resistor resistor maybe we will write it here a resistor is not a memory memory element resistor is not a memory element it do, it don't know it doesn't have any knowledge about whatever what are all the things happened to it before that instant particular instant because it it dissipates the power into heat energy right that is the whole idea so this is the resistor simple thing you don't need to go very deep into resistor because it can be easily understood now what we will do we will take inductor right now we have taken inductor see current through inductor is i of t and uh, the voltage across the inductor i am taking it as vl now what is vl we have already seen this right what is vl vl will be is equal to l di by dt this is the voltage across inductor you take the basics of uh, maybe magnetic circuits you will get this expression right now you see if i want to find what is current maybe this is i of t if, if i am not writing i of t please um, excuse me because i of everywhere we go we have to use it is v of t it is i of t if i miss it please try to understand me anyway so this is the voltage expression if i want to find what is the current in the inductor then what i can do so l l can be bring to the other side so it will be di that should be is equal to 1 by l and this will be vl into dt right so integrate on both sides integrate on both sides what you will get this is 1 by l then integration of vl into dt right this becomes now i i will be is equal to 1 by l integration of vl into dt try to understand this is the i expression now maybe maybe th this one i will write it as i of t so that you will easily understand i have told you right please uh, you come with me if i am writing like this right so so if i want to find what is the current in an inductor then i i need to integrate maybe what is this integration what is the limits of this integration huh? if i want to find a particular time current then this integration becomes minus infinity to plus t at a particular time 
right i will i will draw the graph now right now you see i have drawn a graph if this is the voltage maybe if this is the voltage and if i want to find what is the current at this particular time t then what i need then the current expression tells us it is 1 by l integration of minus infinity to plus t which what is the limit of this integration that depends on what is t now but minus infinity will be minus infinity so t into vl dt then then what is the outcome if we want to find this instant current then you need to know what what is the voltage from minus infinity to this t you should know what are all the things you have done to inductor before this time with the voltage then only you can find what is the current at that particular time so so these are all voltages that might have stored in the inductor so inductor is a memory element it it, it knows it can remember what are all the things that have done to me before at a particular time so you can commonly write inductor inductor is a memory element is a memory element it knows what you have done to it that is the thing you need to understand right now what we can do see we can just split this integration maybe i will write it down this i of t can be written as what we can do so this is the point zero zero right so integration of i by l integration of t is equal to minus infinity to zero and then it is vl dt plus what i can do integration of t is equal to 0 to plus infinity maybe maybe we will call it as t vl into dt so this is the split i, I have just splitted this integration right so now this can be up to 0 this can be considered as initial conditions initial conditions of an inductor so i i will just directly write this as i of 0 plus integration of t is equal to 0 to t vl into dt this might sometime this i of 0 may be 0 they uh, for example if this inductor is connected to a voltage that voltage source is uh, the switch connected to the voltage source is closed at the time t is equal to 0 before that that inductor was an ideal was ideally it is not connected to any other circuits so t at uh, minus infinity to plus in uh, plus zero this inductor value this voltage will be zero there is no voltage maybe you can write like that so i am just considering it to be i of zero i of zero right i of zero and it may be it, sometime it may contain some current sometimes it may not have some current right so you remember this one now what we will do we will take up an example and this is the example see for the, they have given you for t less than 0 uh, v of t is 0 so obviously obviously current through the inductor before time t is equal to 0 it will be 0 so what they are asking you to find find the current in an inductor for t greater than 0 that is the given question right so what is the formula we have uh, done we have uh, derived here it is i of t will be is equal to i of t will be is equal to i of 0 plus integration of 0 to t i of sorry integration of 1 by l into v l dt so this is the formula now so so what we will do we we, we try to integrate this one now right now let us assume this voltage is a dc voltage constant voltage right so what we will get so this value is 0 they have given you so this becomes 0 so that should be is equal to so here if you take this is constant vl is constant so we will take it outside so vl by l integration of 0 to t 1 into dt right so what you will get 
obviously you will get t right because it will if you integrate this this will be t so if you apply upper limit lower limit everything you do you will get an expression like i of t will be is equal to v l by l into t this is the curve and uh, sorry this is the expression and if you draw the diagram for example let us consider let us consider VL is equal to 1 volt that is uh, maybe DC volt and L is equal to 1 Henry, L is equal to 1 Henry. Then what is the diagram, what is the curve, how the curve will be? So this will be maybe you take time axis, this is time, maybe I am taking this as 1 second, 2 second, 3 second and 4 second and this is 5 second and you see if this is the I of t value then this is 0 then if I substitute 1 here then it will be i of t is here what is the value it will be 1 into t it depends on t right I am, I am just considering it to be 1 so t is equal to 1 second it becomes 1 at t is equal to maybe I will write it down t is equal to 1 second the i of t value will become 1 at t is equal to 2 second the i of t value become 2 t is equal to 3 seconds, the i of t value becomes 3. So, how it will be? So, maybe this is 1, 2, 3, 4, I am just drawing like this. So, it will be like this, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, it may be, it will be increasing, it will be increasing like this. For example, how long does this current will increase? And it will be increasing with the time, with the time, there is no limit of uh, there is no limit for this increase. So, if you leave <laughs> without doing anything, if you connect a DC source with the inductor, then your inductor will be spoiled. What happens? Because this current will linearly increase. There will be some rated current for the inductor, right? Beyond this rated current, this current will increase, then this inductor will be spoiled, inductor will be spoiled, right. So, somehow this current will increase, right. And we can, we can put a resistor here and that resistor will limit the current and that resistor will depends on how much of this inductor can carry current. That means nothing but it is the rated current. So, we can also see that, right. So, now this is the basics, this is the basics. If you give DC, the current will increase. Now you try to understand inductor can store energy. That is the thing we have seen it has a memory element right. It is a memory element and then it has to store some energy and how much of energy that an inductor will store that we will see now right. So what we can write now so P, P of T can be written as V into I right. So it may be. So what is V here? We know that V will be is equal to I across inductor what is V L into dI by dt into I. So, this is the power expression and if you want to go for power the energy maybe energy what we can do. So, I will write down the topic in you. So, inductor inductor can store energy right inductor can store energy so if, if 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 we do this then what will be the energy energy can be written as power into time right so i am just writing it as dw so dw means we can take it as dt right power into time so it will be di by l into di by dt into i into dt so this dt and this dt can be cancelled out and if I take integration on the both sides, so integration on dw that should be is equal to integration of L into di into i. And what should be the limit now? Uh, until current, right? How much of current it is increasing? So from 0 to i, that is the limit because that much of current will be increased, right? So this is how you need to write the expression. And if you simplify this, I will write it down. So, this one uh, can be written as that means W, 
W will be is equal to L is constant. So, you take L constantly out, commonly outside. So, 0 to I and this will be I into dL. So, if you are uh, uh, just substitute and this limit and you will get W will be is equal to L into maybe I will write it down 1 by 2 L into I square. Right. So, this is the formula for energy stored in an inductor. So, W that means energy stored in an inductor can be written as half Li square. You just substitute, you will get this expression. Right. So, so you see this tells us joules, this is joules. This tells us energy can be stored in the inductor that depends on what how much of current you are pumping into inductor that is the whole idea and you see what we have seen here if you give a dc voltage to the inductor then the current inside the inductor will current through the inductor will increase indefinitely and what you need to do you need to control this increase in current by somehow and that is the topic we are going to see in the next class and we will see how much of energy an inductor stored with a numerical example right so we we try to learn what is the basics of inductor capacitors and then we try to uh, go for rl rc circuits and then we try to solve the differential equation. If you go RL circuit, RC circuit, you, you can see first order differential equations in, with RL and RC. Sorry, with RL, as yes, with RL and RC. And if you are going for LC circuits, then it will be second order differential equations. And how to solve those differential equations, we are going to see in depth with the mathematical knowledge. Right? So, we will see in the next class. After this, you try to get the knowledge by these are all very basic things. These basics will help you to learn transient responses in RLC circuits. Right? Thank you. We will see in the next class.